Hey, so um, the reason I wanted to know how long you've been in this game is because um, that kind of gives us some, you know, basis for what we got. We got people that have been doing this for four months and people that have been doing it for 28 years, right? Um, and we've got a lot of history in the, in the world of striping, but this is important. Um, you know, our striping operation is one of those safety improvements that we do to the road that's just critically important. So what you do every day makes a huge difference in the safety of the people that navigate our roads. Now it has some other benefits, you know, about keeping people in the right lanes and moving traffic, but the primary thing that you guys do every day is making sure people go home safe every night. You know, and I, that's important. So you gotta know that as the starting point for what you guys are doing every day. Then we gotta talk about how do we do that, right? So let me tell you my story. I've been with MoDOT going on 34 years. Um, spent a lot of that time in the bridge maintenance operations. And so my introduction to striping was this. Um, they asked me to go to St. Louis to run operations in St. Louis. And I think it was probably about my fourth day on the job. I got a call from uh, one of our striping supervisors who I really didn't ever know till that day. He said, he said, Ed, we got a situation. <laughs> I said, okay, what's that? And I guess we had just put in some bulk paint tanks the last year, and um, guess what? Over the winter, the agitators like went out, and we had like hundreds of gallons of paint in the tanks that was like a brick, you know? Um, so I don't know why they asked me. I had no idea what I was doing with striping, but I, I distinctly remember that when the striping supervisor said, hey, we got a situation. You know, we all have, we have situations all the time, right? You guys deal with those every day, and just like that one, we figured it out, and you guys figure those things out. But let me, let me go back in history a little bit. So let's go back maybe five years ago. What were we doing five years ago? Some of you that were in the, in the game five years ago. Memorial Day. What was, what, was, what was interesting about Memorial Day? Get all, the majors done. Get all the majors done by Memorial Day. Okay. On the surface, that was maybe a good idea, right? We said, you know what, we're going to get the road striped so that the majority of the season that people are driving on our roads, they're driving on a good stripe. That was the, that was the plan behind that. Um, probably not very well thought out. So a few years in, as I took this job, um, Tom came to me like maybe a year later and said, hey, Ed, this isn't working. And I said, well, why isn't it working? It sounds like a good idea. We're getting it done. He said, but look at what, look at what we're doing. And basically what we were doing is we were trying to stripe the most significant roads on the system that carry the most traffic in the worst possible conditions, and we were trying to go fast. And what that led to was really bad quality stuff that didn't last. We were better off probably just throwing the beads in the ditch and calling it a day. Um, so we, we took a hard look, and I'm, I'm one that is open to suggestion all the time. So, so that was kind of the evolution of what we're talking about today. And we said, you know what, we got to get better at that. Um, the other thing that was going on five years ago was what? How many times were our striping crews getting hit? Our TMAs getting hit? You know how many? It was a lot. I think it was maybe 17 at the height, maybe. Is that about right? I think that was maybe total. Total statewide, and statewide. striping was probably. Six and eight. So, so we were getting our striping trains hit pretty often. And so, you know, we've, we've worked really hard on trying to make sure that we're doing things safe. We've changed the game on, you know, what the equipment is, what kind of lighting package we do. And so that leads to what's up here on the board behind me. And this kind of has evolved. But basically, the idea is, is that we do our work safe. And that fits right in with our behavior-based safety training is that we, we look out for each other. We make sure we have a plan. We do our risk-based assessment all the time. And so kind of the evolution is we do this safe, 
we've done the necessary stuff to equipment. We've got panic lights. We've got, you know, we're trying some new things with some audible alerts. Um, I don't know. Do any of you guys have the audible alerts on your on your striping trains yet? We're trying that in St. Louis, and I think once we get some experience with those, we're probably going to add those to some of our equipment. But really, the most important thing you can do on the safety front is the planning, right? Planning your day, making sure you know what you're facing, make sure we're striping, you know, the least, um, you know, impact areas so that we're put, not putting ourselves or our customers at risk. So the planning, the equipment, what we're doing, looking out for each other is important above all else. So I don't care if you need, you know, 10 TMAs to do some part of the road, you need to get them, right? That's a little bit probably of over-exaggeration, but get the equipment you need, plan for the work you're going to do to make sure you're safe when you do it, okay? And we're going to keep working on that. We, we've made a lot of progress. So we've, we've cut the number of TMA hits in half, and the goal this year is to have zero, okay? And then on the worker safety front, you know, we still got to work through our our behavior-based safety training to say, let's make sure we do the work safe. You know, I know a lot of you have automated systems that load your trucks and do all that kind of stuff, but there's still a lot of opportunities for people to get hurt, right? Climbing on and off equipment, making sure we're, we're doing that in the right way. So safety, safety number one above all else, right? Make sure you've got that down. And then really what we started working on kind of after Tom started talking to us about, hey, you know what, we're really not putting down the best stripe, is we said, well, let's, let's look at what are the things we got to do to get a quality product. And the first thing that, that they suggested to me is let's get rid of the Memorial Day deadline. That is forcing us to do things that are not the right thing to do to get a quality product. So I said, okay, two years ago we got rid of that. Now, that doesn't mean we're not going to work to try to get, get as many roads striped as we can, as quickly as we can, but safety first. We're going to do quality work next. And, and let me tell you what, what I see, because maybe you're in the trenches every day and you really don't see the big global picture, but over the last three years, the quality of our stripe has improved dramatically. I mean dramatically. We, and, and Tom does the QA work on that, and we, we run the you know, the laser van across the state to look at how we're doing. And it's, it's a marked difference from we were three years ago to where we are today. So, so kudos to you guys for what you're doing. The things you're doing on making sure you're, you know, getting everything tuned in. And that's what these guys are all going to talk about today. How do we get tuned in and, and have the best ability to put out a quality stripe every day? But you're doing the right thing. So getting rid of the Memorial Day deadline, working on what our quality – you know, our quality approach is, is paying really big dividends. And when I look at the QA numbers that Tom brought, when was that, in December? Um, really good, you know. Across the state, in all parts, things are improving. Um, we're going in, we're coming out of winter with stripes that were better than we were going in to winter three years ago. So, so that's going to help us in the long run. You know, at some point, we may get to the point where we can skip striping some stuff. Now, I don't know if we're quite there yet, and probably you guys in Kansas City especially, you have, you know, you have a lot of, of uh, wear and tear with just how much traffic you got. So I don't know if that's really a possibility here or maybe in St. Louis or Springfield, but some other places where traffic volumes are lighter and if we don't have a heavy winter, I, I think that's a distinct possibility. Okay, so we keep working on quality. And I'm sure we're going to have some discussions today about how do we make that better. Every year, that should be our goal, is that we make it better. Okay? So we've kind of addressed safety stuff. We're working on quality stuff. And both of those things we can't lose sight of. No matter what we do, we always can get better at those two things. Um, and then the, the last thing, and, and we've kind of talked about now, how do we get more efficient? Okay? And, and not at the, not at the um, you know, 
peril of the other two, but now that we've got the other two things kind of under control, let's start thinking about that. And if we do those first two things right, a lot of times the efficiency part will come. But just think about how many stripers do we run in the state? Do you know? 17, right? 16. God, you wanted, I wanted another one, didn't I? Central District's little one. Yeah, okay. But anyway, we run, every year we run a lot of stripers. And if you think about how much we stripe, Think about if every one of your crews could get five minutes more a day. Gun on five minutes more every day. Times 17 stripers, times five days a week, times however many months a year. Think about what that does to our production rate. Still doing it quality, still doing it safe, but just think about the things that you can do just from looking at your operation to get another minute here, another minute there. Um, you know, and that any increase in production that we get, that's good for us because then we can work on other things, right? Because everybody's got plenty to do, right? Because if you're not striping, you probably need to be what? Signing or intersection marking or you can go down the list. So I, I think we have an opportunity as, as we share with each other, and I hope you do that today, to think about how are the, what are those things that we can do. And they're probably not big things. They're probably a lot of little things that will help us in that arena. Okay? So kind of that's the mantra, right? Safety. We're going to do quality work. We get those two things locked down. We're going to work on efficiency. So this year I'd like you to think about what are those next steps we take in getting more efficient. All right? So still, Memorial Day deadline is gone. We're going to stripe the roads when it's the best time to stripe it. So when the weather's good and the you know, temperatures are right, we ought to be running the machines. And we ought to run them you know, as long as we can run them when the, when the sun is shining, right? That's kind of the goal. Okay. So with that, um, I will entertain questions from you guys. And you can ask me anything else you want about things other than striping, I guess. All right, well, so what's your biggest concern? Manpower. How much? What? Manpower. Manpower. So you don't have enough folks to fill up the stripers? So how, how are we doing in your northwest, right? We usually borrow from the signing crew. Okay, so you got a full crew ready to go this year? I mean, we, we make do. Okay. Right. And we know that we've had kind of an issue with hiring, right? So we're trying to work on that. I think, I think if I look at the big numbers, we've kind of come out of the valley and we're starting to make some progress on being able to hire folks. Um, you know, we're still working on the issues around pay. We still are working on that at the legislative level, and that's going on as we speak. Um, so, you know, we'll know kind of where we stand in May. I think that'll help if we continue to do that. Um, but you know, every district's got the amount of, of resource money they've got for hiring people. And I think every district is working really hard on trying to get folks in the door, get them trained. Um, I think that's one of the issues though that we have is um, when we went around the room, I, I didn't hear a lot of, I've been here 10 years, I heard some of that and then some I've been here, what, four months? Four months, right? With striving, but you know, with MoDOT a long time. But we have some people that we've got to work on training them, right? And this part of our business is not real simple, right? So you guys that have been here a while, you have a responsibility, right? To get some of those newer folks trained up, make sure they know how to do it safe, make sure they know what the, you know, what our expectations are on quality. And but I think we're doing a little better. But know that we understand that's an issue, and we're trying to work on how do we how do we do that better, and how do we how do we train better too, because we know that in like in Kansas City, you guys are working on a training academy to get people kind of in the door and trained up faster. I've heard good things about that so far, so that's good news. What else is on your mind this morning? How do you determine how many? 
How do I determine it? To how I determine it's really easy. Um, I give every district engineer a budget. And so really the decisions that get made on how things are allocated within a district are done at the district level. Um, you know, we give every district a, a personal services budget and a, and a cash budget, and we let them take care of making those decisions. So a maintenance superintendent probably gets a budget, right? And it's kind of your job to make sure we do the right thing. And I'm sure your maintenance superintendent, whoever whoever that is, is has got that same responsibility. I'm just curious how the, the numbers are determined per per barn or per division, if you will. Yeah. At the, let me, at the global level, at the big picture level, there, there's really a formula that, of how we allocate not only the money that goes into the five-year capital program, which is where we spend on contract work, but also how we allocate money to districts on the operations side. So, and it's based on things like how many miles of road do you got? You know, how many, how many other things do you have to take care of, like signals and things like that? So there's a a pretty elaborate formula, so it's not just random. It's based on what do you got, you know, how many how many barns do you have, how much how much road do you have to take care of, and that's how we allocate money. Okay. Um, Thank you. What else is on your mind today? This ain't really a question. It's kind of a statement for quality. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think we're doing a great job quality, but then come winter time, we put these snow plows out there. Don't have the Yama blades on. They got straight carbide tip blades on. And I can notice after every snowstorm I come down the road, I call them erasers, just erasers, erasing my line. So I, what I think for my district, I like to see them get away from the carbide tips and back to the Yama blades, you know, to help save the quality of paint. Mm -hmm. And I like to say it's just a comment. More no, than I, I, I think there's a question we talk about a lot, you know, is. Um, there's, there's issues with both, right? The Yoma blades work pretty well, but they're really expensive. And some people, there, there is a lot of kind of preference, I think, on what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I think we should have that discussion, um, but it, it is kind of one of those cost-benefit type discussions. Can we afford them? Um, the, the one thing I'll tell you, though, is Regardless of what kind of blade we use, if you put down a quality stripe, it's going gonna, it's gonna to survive better regardless. So, you know, I, I'm sure these guys are going to talk about, you know, having good beads and how, how embedded they are. Um, you know, and the two things that are really important to us in our world of striping is if you get a pavement plan right, right, if we have good pavement that ain't all broke up, it's going to take a stripe better. So, so what we do on the pavement side is pretty important, and then then winter is important. You know, the more braces we put down and all that kind of stuff. I think this year we've, you know, ice storms we kind of grind on the pavement sometimes, but we really didn't have that many. So what I see and is that we we've, we've survived winter pretty well. Um, stripes look pretty good, in, in a lot of in most places. But I, I, get, I, get, I get what you're talking about. Like Tom come up here a year or two ago, and I took him to a particular place. And I don't know, the week before, we had one of these little small events. Well, they went through with their blades, and they had the carbide on the outside of the edges. And then the numbers, Tom, I can't remember, they was like 150. Yeah. They had the uh, Yama blades running on the center line, and they were still showing 400, 500. So I think that was kind of a, you know, a good test to show the difference. Uh, right. And so, so I think the question is how effective are those blades on doing their job on snow removal? And yeah. I've heard varying things, but I think, you know, we can we can have that discussion. I, I agree. Yeah, I was just saying for another step in the quality, that might be our next. Yeah. Thing to Maybe we have that discussion with district leadership, you think? Sure. Have you had that discussion? I have not personally. Okay. I don't know if we've had that discussion with no. Becky or any. No. So, good point. We'll not. We'll knock that one. Write that one down, and we'll have that discussion. Okay. What else do you want to know? Overtime allowed. Overtime allowed. Yeah. 
Yes. I mean, it is? But it's a district decision, right? It's a, okay. Same thing. Give the district X amount of money, they make the decisions. <coughs> the last thing you want is, is me making those kind of decisions because I want the people that are closest to the decision to make it. So I'm sure you've got a budget, right? Where's my Northwest leadership? <laughs> you've got a budget, right? And, and we make those decisions on whether we work overtime or not. Um, and that's a district, that is a district decision. And I think we, we budget in to our overall budget an overtime amount. Um, we've probably spent some of that already because of snow, but I don't know how much. Every district is probably a little different. But, you know, I want you guys to know we make, we make the decisions on what we do at the district level in the district. So you need to have that discussion with your leadership and make sure you understand where, where the overtime discussion falls. And the person that's going to make that in Kansas City just walked into the room. <laughs> so, you know, you need to talk to Susan about that. Um, but that's, that's where it should get made, right? You don't want me making those kind of decisions. What about the equipment? What about equipment? <laughs> Uh, well, there's been discussion okay. about uh, having the uh, coming out of Jeff City with the big purchase items like a new strike. Yeah, board. you heard about that already. I've heard about that. What do you think about that? That would be fabulous for each district, I mean, you know, because that is a big ticket item. Yeah. You know, you're looking at, what, a half million right. for a new striper. And, you know, uh, we have the oldest striper in the state, in Kansas City District. And, you know, it, I know we had it refurbished this year because there's been some uh, contract issues with the uh, uh, stripers that are out there now. People have problems with it. But uh, I was just wondering that would, because, you know, I was told that, well, we need so many, we need a couple of uh, tractors. We need, you know, other equipment that, yeah, what here, you know, where do you make that decision? And if it did come out of Jeff City for the huge ticket items, that would you know, benefit the district overall. So it really doesn't make any difference where it comes from because the amount of money is the same. We didn't, we didn't like magically create some money. Oh, I, I realize that. Okay. <laughs> but, but let's talk a little bit about equipment because you guys have one of the most expensive fleets in the entire state. The striping fleet in, this, in, in our organization is probably by far, you know, per capita the most expensive um, operation that we run. Maybe, maybe closely followed by the guys that do bridge inspection with the snoopers. Those by far are the far the most expensive pieces of equipment we own. So, I mean, our striping fleet, you know, we've bought a, several new stripers. Um, how many in Kansas City? We have, in Kansas, new, we've got the newest one we had five years ago. Okay, so you got a five year old one and a 20. 22 year old one? Ooh, yeah, man. 22 year old. That was my uh, Okay. You guys do a good job of, of, of maintaining that, I guess, huh? You, do, you obviously do. Um, okay. In Northwest, what are your stripers? Uh, I think we got an 83 or an 04 and a brand new one. So you got a brand new one and one that's 12, 15 years old. Okay. And I think that's pretty accurate. I mean, we've got several new ones around the state. But let's just talk about fleet in general. Okay, so how much money do you think we spend on fleet a year? Any idea? We spend about $23 million on fleet. Okay? And you kind of know that one of your stripers probably costs a half a million dollars in, in rising. And, and probably one of your single axle TMA trucks costs what? 120 grand. And you have three of those in your striping fleet, probably on every striping train, plus a lead truck and a backup truck. So, you know, you're, you're looking at a, a million dollars of iron rolling down the road every day you guys go out on the road easily. Okay. And those are big investments. So we spend about $23 million on our fleet. 
and we just completed a study. One of the things we really haven't done for a while is to get an idea of what the fleet really needs. And I think probably all of you have a story to tell, right? I couldn't go to work yesterday because what? The TMA didn't work. I couldn't get, get it started. Uh, lost the hydraulics. I don't know. You, you know, I hear the stories. Um, but, you know, even even one small thing can put a million dollars of equipment and you know seven crew members on the on the sidelines until we get it fixed because we're not going out there with equipment that's not properly working right so kind of the kind of the results of the study that we've done basically says we're about somewhere around 10 million dollars behind every year so we're spending 23 and we really need to be spending about 10 million more a year on fleet. Now that doesn't solve the problem overnight. Um, when we looked at it, if we wanted to solve the problem overnight and have everything up to snuff right now, you know what that bill was? $145 million. Now we didn't get there overnight and we're not gonna get out of that overnight, but if we, if we would spend another $10 million a year, you know, and we would slowly improve the, the uh, condition of the fleet. And so I think that's what we're going to do. We have a meeting um, Thursday with the senior leadership team to kind of think through that and see how we want to do it. And, and some of the discussion really is, while we know we have a deficit in the fleet, should we start purchasing the big ticket items, and that's dump trucks, stripers, snoopers, aerial trucks, those things that cost several hundred thousand dollars a piece globally for the entire state, dole them out to the districts that really have the worst condition equipment. And I don't know what you think about that. I think at the end of the day, that's how we get to the, the best overall condition the quickest. But I know some districts don't like that, right? If I'm a district that has a better conditioned fleet, I'm not sure I like that. <coughs> but you know, I'm looking at I'm looking at the big picture, and I think a 10 million or a 7 million or whatever we decide the investment is, is going to get everybody better. So I don't think anybody loses in that discussion. But some districts like to have that, you know, that decision making authority on their own and say I want to do this and this, not that and that. Um, so we'll see where that goes. But I think the, the bottom line is, is we're going to make some more investment in fleet because we need to. We've kind of we've kind of put that on the back burner to do other things over the last several years. So, you know, if you have an opinion about that, you probably need to be talking to your district leadership. Um, Susan's here; she can, you know, take your comments at break. Because um, I, I don't know I don't know exactly what the right answer is. I know that here's what I know the answer is. We need to invest more in the fleet. Um, you're probably due for a new striper if yours is 22 years old, right? And still running strong. And still running strong. Now, some people would tell you don't get rid of your old striper because you're not going to like the new one. Um, some of the people that just got a new one maybe aren't so happy because it takes a while to get those dialed in. But um, we'll see how that goes. I mean, I think in general, you know, you can't continue to run that kind of equipment uh, long term. So kind of good news on that front, I think. Okay, so I didn't hear anything from our construction folks. So how are we doing on striping on the construction side? Because the public doesn't care whether we do it or somebody else does it. They don't know any different. I'm getting like blank stares from you guys. Okay, not okay? Uh, most of the contractors do a good job because we have the uh, ability to pull the pay from them. Right. And so if the contractor does a poor job, they don't get paid. And um, we dock them if their numbers are below the minimum requirement according to the uh, policies. Mm -hmm. the policy. So for the most part, did they get it right the first time, or are you guys having to kind of work on them pretty hard to get them to do quality stuff. Most of them do a good job the first time. Uh, 
biggest issues is if um, there are machine hiccups, which I'm sure uh, has that problem too. Every, every once in a while, right? Yeah, I've, I mean, just part of the nature of the beast. But most of the time, we do a good job. Um, uh, sometimes we've had to uh, pull pay, and the contractors had to come back out and redo it a few, on a few jobs. OK. Well, and I think it's just important for you guys especially you guys that are doing our striping is you know we kind of always have this discussion about well contractors do crappy work and then maintenance has got to take care of it right has anybody ever heard that okay so so we're going to hold you know we have to have our quality as good as we ask our contracts to be so you know there's no difference we still expect them to get you know whatever the you know number of Candela's is I'm getting out of my I'm getting into these guys territory here but you know we want to get the same quality stripe right so whatever whatever we do with our forces and what we do with contract forces they ought to look the same so we ought to demand that quality of ourselves just like we demanded of contractors and, and I think that's good for all of us so so we're not saying hey you know what contractors aren't saying well you let MoDOT get away with you know going and doing less quality work um, we're not going to do that. So what we do, they do, and vice versa. Now, the only thing I had with uh, contractors last year was that uh, on uh, 152, that the uh, cat tracks were coming. They were too close. I was able to get a hold of Derek. He got a hold of the construction guy who got a hold of the contractors. They went out. Me and Keith looked at it, and they were, they were out there re-grinding and redoing it. And the other one was that was brought to my attention, well, through the uh, civil suit. Uh, did they follow MoDOT policies as far as giving a uh, message on the message board because of the accident of Platte City? Mm -hmm. And those questions I could not answer because... That's not your, that's not your problem. <laughs> that's not, that was the questions I could not answer because I do not know. But, I, but I'm glad everybody is here today because I think, you know, whether we're talking about MoDOT doing the work or a contractor doing the work, you know, we still can learn from the, how do we put down quality stripe? How do we get that done? They're using the same stuff we are. So um, I expect we should take the lead and we should be the experts. We do this all the time and that'll help us as we're doing it um, in the contract world. So anyway, all right. So anybody else got anything they want to know? Intersection markings. Now we're going to tackle that. Uh, you're right. State. I think you're right. Because of the, you know, we used to have hand marking crews and those uh, a little longer. So, you know, we, I feel like we're going to either have to get some crews together, put together especially for that, or we're going to have to contract out more intersection markings. We've tried a few things unsuccessfully, and we're going to try some more on the contracting side. So. Yeah, I, I agree. That's always a challenge, especially in, in our more urbanized cities across the state. Um, that, that's a real challenge. Now, what I'd tell you is, as we go down this road, if we can get you know, a little more efficiency out of what we do, that creates more opportunity for us to do more in that arena. And of course, you know, we, we, we can always do stuff by contract, but that's a money decision, right? It's kind of one of these, what are you gonna do? You're gonna spend it on pavement, you're going to spend it on striping, um, and we'll make those priority calls. So the other thing is, is our pavements get better. Is our pavement plans, you know, we aren't spending as much of our maintenance time on keeping pavements in good shape. That gives us some opportunity to do that too. So I, I think we can make progress, but I, I think I know you're right. We have a probably a deficit there we got to try to make up. Yeah, and it, I mean, that's kind of one of those, you know, it's a priority game, right? You got to figure out where you're going to put your limited resources. And um, so as we get more efficient, I think we can probably do that. Um, or we just may have to make some decisions to do that. Are they going to start contracting in the pre-more? Because we use a lot of it. 
Um, you mean to do the hand marking, the pre -marking. Yeah, the tape. Do the tape. The thermal plastics. Thermal plastics. Well, I guess I need to ask those, the contractors, they have to do the Because any overlay, we've always tried to, well, we've been trying to get them, instead of using the tape, to use the thermal plastic, because it, it does bond better. Yeah, so I'll, talk about, I'll talk about uh, what Ed's done. I'll talk about what we changed in the specs. And we've kind of put it in the district's hand. We got to get our contract jobs to take care of those things when we're there. No doubt about that. We should do that. Okay. Hey, well, let me let me end by saying thanks um, to you guys because you know we've changed the game. We've asked. You guys have made some comments to us. We've, I think, we've made some really good changes in the striping arena. Um, and it's really because you guys are. Of proud of what you do, you understand what the business is, and you do a good job. I think you don't, you probably don't hear that enough. But when I look at what the results are that we're getting, um, that's because the folks that are on the ground doing the work every day are doing a good job. So, so I say thank you to you guys for doing that. And let's make sure when we go through this season, we're looking at safe first quality next and then the rest of the stuff with efficiency will take care of itself you guys are really good at what you do and you're going to figure that part out the goal is that we come out of this year with zero incidents that we have quality stripes all across the state and then we do it as efficiently as we can, as we can do it so um, i'm looking forward to this I, i'm glad we're having the training today i think that's just another reinforcement of the fact we're going to get everybody trained up. We're going to give you the best knowledge we can give you so you can go out and do great things. Okay? So thanks.